Today, we're going to be very precise about how time-restricted feeding, it's very clear from both animal studies and human studies, can have a very powerful and positive impact on everything from weight loss and fat loss to various health parameters. When is the ideal feeding window? So it turns out that the answer to the question, when is it best to eat, is actually best answered by thinking about the other side of the coin, which is when is it best to fast? So because we are fasting during sleep, it's very clear that it's best to extend the sleep-related fast either into the morning or to start it in the evening. Let's think about what happens when we sleep. When we sleep, our body undergoes a number of different processes in the brain and body in order to recover the cells and tissues. Many of you have probably heard of autophagy, which is essentially a cleaning up, a gobbling up of dead cells and cells that are injured or sick. So you're already fasting when you're asleep. And how deep you are into that fast depends on how long it was since your last meal. So if you fast early in the day and you've been asleep for five, six, seven, eight hours, I would hope somewhere between six and eight hours for most people is going to be beneficial. When you wake up, I mentioned earlier that you don't want to eat for at least the first 60 minutes after waking, but were you to extend that fasting to say 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., or even 12 noon or later, you are taking advantage of the deep fast that you were in during sleep and certainly toward the end of sleep. Now, why do I say deep fast? Well, because when we eat, the clearance of that food from our gut and the processes in our cells and organs that are related to digestion and the utilization of that food takes about five to six hours. So if you eat a meal and that meal lasts 10 minutes, 20 minutes, or 30 minutes, or even an hour, and then you stop eating, you've stopped eating, but you are not fasting at that point. You can say you're fasting because you're no longer putting food into your digestive tract, but you are not in a fasted state. You are not under conditions of fasting. So one thing is certain, that you want your eating window to be tacked or attached to your sleep based fasting in a way that makes it easier for you to get into the fasted state for a period of time. Can you not eat until 2 p.m.? Drink coffee, drink water, and in the morning get up and just get on either run or get on some exercise bike and just pedal like someone's chasing you with a syringe full of poison. When you've been asleep all night, your fuel reserves, like you've got fuel in your fat, got fuel in your muscles that can be burned, and you've got fuel in your liver, it's called glycogen. And when you wake up early, all of that is as low as it's gonna be because you haven't been eating anything. Got you. And so if you exercise then, your body starts dropping into your body fat stores quicker. So let's talk about movement and the more traditional kinds of movement, aka exercise, has been shown to lead to increases in metabolism and fat loss to greater degrees depending on whether or not, for instance, you're fasted when you do it or not. Whether or not you do your cardio first or your resistance training first. We're finally starting to arrive at a consensus of when is best to do exercise and what types of exercise to do if your goal is fat loss. So rather than think about weight training versus cardiovascular exercise, the most simple way, the most fluid way to have this conversation about exercise and fat loss is in terms of three general types of training, whether or not it's done with weights or body weight, doesn't really matter. And those are high intensity interval training, something that seems to have gained a lot of popularity in recent years, so-called HIIT, H-I-I-T. So high intensity interval training, sprint interval training, so that's gonna be very high intensity or SIT, or moderate intensity continuous training, M-I-C-T. So we've got HIT, SIT, and MICT, M-I-C-T. SIT, this uh, sprint interval training was defined as all out greater than 100% of VO2 max bursts of activity that last eight to 30 seconds interspersed with less intense recovery periods. So this would be sprinting downfield for eight to 30 seconds, then maybe walking back for about a minute or two and then sprinting again and then continuing. So that would be SIT. HIT, H-I-I-T, is defined as sub-maximal, so 80 to 100% of VO2 max bursts of activity that last 60 to 240 seconds interspersed with less intense recovery periods. So on a four, standard 400 meter track, just to give this a little bit of a visual, um, you know, one 
A four minute mile would be fantastic for most people, although people run faster than that, of course. So that's four 60 second laps, but that's back to back to back. But 60 seconds would be about one rev- revolution around the track, maybe maybe 90 seconds, depending on how fast uh, one is running. So 60 to 240 seconds. MICT, okay, this moderate intensity continuous training is steady state cardio, sometimes called zone two cardio these days on the internet which is performed continuously for 20 to 60 minutes at moderate intensity of 40 to 60% of VO2 max, or if you prefer heart rate, 55 to 70% of max heart rate, okay? So we can think about high, medium, and low intensity exercise, although low intensity um, usually means that you could carry on a conversation or maybe you'd have to gasp every every few steps or so while trying to talk and run. That's, I think, uh, going to be the most useful way to have this conversation that we're having now because there's so many different forms of exercise that people do and intensity is important. Let's ask the question that I think many of people are wondering about it, which is, is it better? Meaning do you burn more fat if you do your exercise fasted and fasted in this respect could be that you wake up in the morning, you've been fasting all night, you just hydrate and you exercise or sometimes people will ingest caffeine In any case, that would be fasted. So probably not having eaten anything for anywhere from three to 24 hours or maybe even more. You can find a number of examples where eating before exercise reduces the amount of fat that's oxidized during the exercise. And you can also find a lot of studies showing that eating during exercise will, or prior to exercise, will not reduce the amount of fat that's oxidized. However, the types of exercise, whether or not it was medium intensity, or high intensity or low intensity is all over the map for these studies. So it's very hard to target an ideal protocol. And then if you look really deep in the literature, you start to find meta-analyses where people have actually aggregated all the findings and some modern studies where it points to some very specific and useful protocols. And so here's the rule that, or the protocol that I extracted from that literature. At a period of about 90 minutes, of moderate intensity exercise. There's a switchover point whereby if you ate before the exercise, you will reduce, excuse me, you will burn far less fat from the 90 minute point onward. Whereas if you had fasted prior to the exercise, you hadn't eaten anything for three hours or more prior to the exercise, at the 90 minute point, you will, 90 minutes of exercise, you will start to burn more fat than you would had you eaten. Now, there are also studies that point to the fact that you don't have to wait to 90 minutes in order to get this enhanced fat burning effect. Point to the fact that if one does high intensity training or even the very high intensity forms of training like sprints or squats or deadlifts or any kind of activity that can't be maintained for more than these, you know, eight or I would say up to 60 seconds. So a set of lifting weights repeated, repeated. If that's done, for anywhere from 20 minutes or up to 60 minutes, well then the switchover point in which you can burn more fat if you go into that fasted comes earlier. And this makes sense because there's nothing holy about the 90 minute point for medium intensity zone two cardio. That 90 minute point is the point in which the body shifts over from mainly burning glycogen and realizes this is going on for a while, I'm gonna shift over to a storage site fuel that is in reserve, like body fat. It's, this is gonna happen for a while, so I'm gonna start tapping into body 